Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Jaipur, which has got to be one of the most beloved modern card games for, well, I'm not going to say it's only for couples, but man, this is a great couples card game. Jen and I just love the heck out of this, and I'm going to be trying to show you why today in this quickie run through of this absolutely adorable two-player game. So let's jump right into it now. In this game, we are merchants in the fabled Far East market of Jaipur, trying to collect various goods and camels from the central market and convert them into victory points for all these ships up here. And now as part of setup, uh, there's basically six categories of goods in the game. There's carpet, fabric stuff, and as you can see, there are victory point ships. This one's worth five. The next one for carpet is three, three, two, two, one, one. So the there's definitely rewards to be the first to trade in a collection of carpets to get points because the sooner you get in, the more points you get. So there's carpet, there's spices, there's leather, then there's rubies and gold and silver. And at the beginning of the game, we create the central market by putting three camels out there. Then we shuffle the heck out of the deck, and I've already done that, but I'll just do it a little bit more just to get it a little bit more shuffled. These are really high quality cards too. They shuffle like a dream. And now each player starts the game with a hand of five cards. Two, three, four, five. And so we've each got our hand of five, and two more cards get randomly put in. And let's see, there's some diamond rubies, and there's some silver. Okay. So the market is set up. I am the first player, let's say, and let's get going. Let's start trading. All right, so what did I get? I got a camel. All right, now, having a camel, there's no reason to keep this in my hand. I'll just put this on public display. I have a camel herd of one. Let's see if I can actually move this so you can see my herd a little bit better. So here's my herd of one camel because the other, all the other stuff, let's see, I got two diamonds and I got some leather and I got some carpet. Okay, by the way, Jen, she should have taken her hand and Jen had no camels, so she doesn't have a herd of camels at all. She's got five five cards, all of these are various goods, all right, whereas I've got a camel. So, what do I want to do? Now, on your turn, you, are, you have a choice. You are either going to take some cards from the market, or you are going to sell cards successfully to basically earn victory points. These are basically, you can think of all these chips as money. And you know, these are all people who want to buy carpets. The first person to buy carpet is gonna pay five bucks. The second person to buy carpet is gonna pay three bucks. But I gotta get the stuff first. Now I've got one carpet. I could just go on ahead and say right off the bat, I'm gonna sell carpets and I get five bucks. Or I could say, I'm gonna sell leather and I would get four bucks. Or I could say, whenever you sell, you sell all of the um, instances of it you have. I could sell these rubies and get seven plus seven. I'd be the first to grab these two, but I'm not going to sell right yet because I can see there's more rubies here. And whenever you sell goods, you want to have as many of them as possible in your hand so you can get bigger rewards. So the, you know, the bigger the sale, the better. So uh, instead of selling any of these to get points, I am going to take cards from the market. Now, when you take cards from the market, you have three choices. You can either take one good which is what I'm thinking about doing, because I can take one good, and that just means I would grab, and you know, I would, what I really want to do is I want to grab this ruby, and then that means you, you take one, and you replace one by drawing from the deck, and you know, that puts a new thing in the market. Or, if you want, you can take more than one good. If I wanted to get these uh, rubies plus this silver, I could take both of them. But when you're going to take more than one, instead of replacing them by drawing from the deck, you have to replace them yourself from your hand and from your herd. So if I wanted to grab both of these cards, what I could do is I could say, give up this leather, and I could give up my carpet, but carpet's more valuable. So I could instead give up my um, camel. And that way, I'd be able to get both of these cards. So you either take a single card, which means you replace, you replenish from the deck. You take multiple goods cards, which means you replace from your own personal stores. Or instead, you can take all the camels that are in the market. And, you know, and that will give you a lot of buying power in the future. Let's see. Now, I think I do want both these because getting some more silver would be great, even if I only have one. So I am going to take two from the market. And since I'm taking two, that means I've got to replace. First of all, I'll replace one of those two with the camel from my herd. And now I have no herd. And for my other one, I will go on ahead and get rid of this leather. This leather is the lowest value good in the game. And that was my turn. And now, next turn, I'm thinking I am probably going to want to sell these three 
uh, rubies for seven, seven, and five. But we'll worry about that on my next turn. So that was my turn. And now let's take a look at what Jen's gonna do. What did she end up getting? Right, oh, she's she had rubies too. She would have loved to grab those rubies, but I was first up. But, now this is interesting, I dropped some leather in there. Jen's already got some interest in leather, so she wouldn't mind grabbing this leather I've, I've left here so she can start collecting for a really, really big sale of leather items. Wow, Jen got a little bit of everything. She got some spices, got some silver, got some carpet, and got some leather. Wow. Okay, let's see, what is Jen gonna do? I think she's going to take from there, and she's only going to take a single card. She'll take the single leather, and that means a new card comes, and so, hey, it's more leather. So Jen doesn't mind that. If I leave it alone, she can start just slowly and silently collecting leather so she could have a big leather sale. So that was her turn. Now it's back to me, back to my turn, and now I'm going to go on ahead and sell. I'm going to sell all three of these, and um, you know, the, the bigger the set, the better, because I sold three, that means I get the first three of these chips. So I just made 20 points, no, uh, 19 points, seven plus seven plus five. So these all go in a discard pile, they're pretty much out of the game. And so I've scored all these, you know, the five plus the seven plus the seven, hooray! And I'll just put this over here as a reminder, this is how many points I've scored so far. And that was my whole turn, I sold. But when you sell three or four or five cards all at once. In addition to taking three, four, or five chips, like you just saw me too, I also get a bonus. And I'm gonna take this bonus, which, now nobody knows what it is. You can see there's a question marks. These uh, bonus three chips are one, two, or three points. Nobody knows, so it's gonna be secret information. Jen knows publicly how much money I took, but she doesn't know what this is. Let's see what it was. It was a two. Okay, it wasn't a three. I would've liked a three, but it's better than a one. So, Jen doesn't know I've got two additional points. And it's these bonus chips that make you really want to store up a big hand of cards. I mean, if you can sell uh, a, a collection of five cards all at once, these things, I think, are eight, nine, or ten points that are behind these. So it's good to, to sell a set instead of just singles. All right, so that was my turn. I sold the three rubies. I got the three ruby cards plus the bonus. And now I'm down to only two cards to my name. And so it's Jen's turn again. And she is going to just keep secretly or not so secretly, just starting to collect, because now, on a future turn, Jen could sell three um, leather, and she'd get four plus um, three plus two, and she'd get a little um, bonus as well. But if she can, she'd rather wait till she has four or even five leather so she can get the really big points. So that was Jen's turn. She took a single card, and so that means another one comes out, and oh my gosh, look, it's more leather! Oh, she's happy about that. Okay, now it's my turn again. And so I've got a decision to make here. Now, silver... Um, there's one thing, you may have noticed, um, I kind of divided, there's the common goods and the special goods. The common goods, you can sell just a single. It might be tempting just to sell this single carpet, it's a whole turn, because I'd get the best carpet, I'd get the five-pointer. Um, but I can't sell a single silver because these fine goods, the silver, the gold, and the diamonds, you have to, be, you have, to have at least two of them to be able to make a sale. You cannot sell a single one. And let's see, I don't really care about leather, but you know what? Mm. Ah, see, now remember, you can either take a single, and it replaces from the, uh, the, the draw pile, like you've been seeing Jen doing. You can take more than one good. You can take two or three goods, and then that means you replace from your hand, like I did in the first turn, or you can take camels. And when you do that, you take all of them. I'm tempted to take all these camels, because then I'll have a herd of camels, and it will give me a lot more flexibility to buy in the future. But, here's the problem. If I grab all these camels, four new cards will come out. And, you know, that could be a real benefit to Jen, because I know Jen's got a bunch of cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Actually, this is really good timing. I think I am going to. Instead of taking a single good, instead of selling the goods I got, I'm just going to grab all these camels. And so I've now got a big, mighty herd of camels again. And, um, you know, you kind of can keep secret how many. You just, like, stack them up so nobody can see exactly how many camels you've got, unless, of course, somebody's counting them as you go. So I've got a herd of camel again, and now that means this benefits Jen because she gets first dibs on these four new cards that came out. But here's the problem, and here's why it was good timing for me to make that camel move right now. Everybody has a maximum hand size of 10. Or I'm sorry, not of 10, of 7. You cannot have more than 7 cards in your hand. And so, I can see Jen's already full up on cards. So she can't just keep collecting cards. But you know what? Two more leather came out. Jen is super stoked. Or one more leather came out, plus the one she was already eyeballing. Jen is definitely going to snag those. So what is she going to do? She is going to take two leather, which means she's going to have to give two cards back. And let's see, if she's taking two, maybe she wants to take more. 
Um, let's see. Boy, she'd like to get those. No, she's not going to. She's going to take two, and so she has to put two back. And so, oh, it kills her. She's going to put this ruby back. Because these are super valuable. But one by itself is worth nothing because you can't sell a single ruby. You have to have at least two. So she'll put that in. And let's see, she's got, she has no camel, so she has to put something else in. She, if she puts this green, that makes it very attractive for me to grab two greens. If she puts this carpet, there's three carpets out. She could put out this silver, and there's only a single silver by itself. But Jen doesn't know. I, I think she wants to hold on to the silver because, again, silver is much more valuable. I think she'll put this green back. So she grabbed two leathers. She put a ruby, very valuable, and a green, and thereby making it very attractive for me to grab these two greens. But in doing it, she now has five leather. So she is going to get a very good return on that on her next turn because this turn she just bought. Now it's my turn again. And let's see. So I've already got one carpet. I'd like to get some more of these carpets. So I am going to buy some stuff from the market. I'm definitely going to take these two carpets. And I want to take the ruby. A single ruby by itself. You know, if another ruby comes up, that's a big deal. I think I will take another ruby. And I'll leave these. It's... I mean, how, many, how many camels do I have? I've got one, two, three, four. So what do I take? And I've taken two carpets and... You know, I could take all five cards. But um, I've got, if I want to take all five cards, I'd have to put five cards in their place. I've got four camels and I could give up one more. But I'm not going to do that. I will... You know, I'm just going to leave these two greens. So I took three cards. And that means I had to give up three other cards. I don't want to give up my silver or my other carpet because I'm making a big set of carpets. So I'll give up three of my camels. So you can see why it's good to have a big herd of camels because they give you a lot of buying power. So that worked out pretty well for me. All right, and so now it's Jen's turn again. And so now she's going to sell, she's going to sell this big collection of seven, or I'm sorry, five leather. So that all goes out. She grabs the first five leather chips. One, two, three, four, five. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points. Not bad. But because she did a five of a kind, she gets one of these bonuses. And let's see what it is. It could be eight, nine, or ten, if I recall correctly. It's a nine. That is very nice. So Jen has pretty handily caught up with me now in terms of points. Although neither of us know how many points the other player has exactly because of the unknowns. So anyway, so Jen did a big sale, and now she's down to only two cards in her hand. And all that carpet is gone that she would have liked to have grabbed. Okay, back to me. And I've still got one card in my herd, one camel in my herd. Let's see, what am I going to do? Hmm. Now, I could... I'm just going to go on ahead and sell these three carpets. All right, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy from the market. I'm going to sell. This is three of a kind. And so that means I got the three best. The five, a three, and a three. And I got another. Come on, be a three-pointer. It's a one-pointer. Arg. All right, well, still, that was a pretty nice sale. And that was my turn. And the market stayed static. And now it's Jen's turn. Okay. What is she going to do? If there was any silver out here, she'd go ahead and grab it. Hmm. Let's see. I think... Well, Jen would like to grab all these candles, so she would start having some buying power. But then that's going to reveal three cards that I could grab. But she's going to do it anyway. She'd like to have some buying power. She's get, now, she has a mighty herd of three camels plus these goods in secret. And so on my turn... Ooh, a gold! And another gold! And another green. Okay. And that's the danger. Grabbing a bunch of camels will, save you, will help you later, but in the short term, it really helps your opponent. So now, what do I got to grab? Now, I only have one camel left. I want to take all of these things. But I cannot. I'd like to get the three green so I could do a triple green sale. I'd like to get the two gold and get a double gold sale. <sighs> now, what I could do is I could, I could give up all three of these, the rubies and the silver and the camel, and that would let me pick up the three greens. I'd get a five, a three, and a three, and I'd get another three of a kind bonus. Or, you know what? I think I'm going to grab this gold. I'm going to take two gold from the market, and so I have to replace. Remember, if you take a single, you just refill from the from the draw deck. But when you're taking multiples, I'll replace it with. So my herd is empty again, and I got to give up. Am I going to give up the silver or rubies? I'll give up the rubies. Okay. So I'll hold on to this silver, and so that was my turn. All right, and now it is Jen's turn again, and. Oh, she, you know, not that she knows I'm holding on to silver, but if I had given up that silver, Jen would have snapped it up in a heartbeat, so she'd have a double silver. Let's see, what is she going to do? Hmm, you know what? I think she, um, you know, these three, this herd of camels, she's going to put it right back in the market and grab all three of these greens. And so now the market is full of camels again, and now Jen's going to have a big green sale. 
and back to me. And now no, nobody has an, a herd. Okay, and so I am now going to go on ahead and do a double gold sale. Remember, for the precious commodities, you can't do a single. You have to do at least a double. I'd like to get another gold because then if I do a triple sale, I'll get a bonus. But gold is a rare card. There aren't that many in the game. So I'm just going to go and help sell the double while I can. And I just made 12 points. Nice. And see, a big part of this game is knowing when to buy and when to sell because, you know, I'd love to grab all these, what do you call them, all these camels. But then again, I'm opening it up for Jen so she can get a lot of stuff. And I can see she's got a lot of cards in her hand. So she might have the flexibility to give up some of these cards. So anyway, so I just went ahead and sold my gold. And now I've just got one card in my hand. Jen, let's see, what is she going to do? She's going to go on, she is going to grab these camels because the interesting thing is, so she's now got a big herd, and she knows I've only got one card left. So even though four new cards are going to come out, she can't, I can't really capitalize on it very much because I don't have a lot to trade for. Two more... Oh! If I had just waited and... Oh no! I could have sold three or even four gold. Wow. All right. So Jen just revealed some stuff. And so... And, and then she has her big herd of camels again, plus her big hand of cards. And let's see. And another green came out. She's hoping to grab that green so she can sell four greens. And so I've got one silver. There's nothing out here that helps me with my silver. Um, let's see. So there's no cam. I could spend my turn just taking a single camel, but I'm gonna and I, I can't take multiple things. I don't have multiple things to trade. So I'm just gonna go on ahead and grab a single gold. I'm gonna start trying to collect, and hopefully I'll be able to grab that other gold too. Let's see. And now it's Jen's. Oh, look at that! Two rubies. Oh dear. Oh, that's scary. What is Jen going to do? Jen cannot pass that up. She is going to grab these two rubies. And let's see, her hand size is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So her hand size is full, and she'll replace them with her herd of camels. And it, the nice thing about having a big herd of camels is they don't go towards your hand size. It's like you have a bigger hand size without going over. So now Jen's going to have a couple of really nice sales. Let's see, she could get rid of this purple as well. You know, I think she will. She also took the gold and left the purple because she knows I want that gold because she saw me take one, so she figured she better take the other one so I can't do a gold sale. And I'm like, ah, oh, the gold! Shoot. All right, so now what am I going to do? I'm not excited about that green or that purple, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab three camels. Beep, beep, beep. And so now I've got a mighty herd once more. And so there's some more green and some leather and some purple. All right, Jen's turn. Oh. Jen wants, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jen can't have any more cards in her hand. She'd like to use her herd to get two more of these greens so that she could have a five sale and get another five. Wow. But to get those greens, she'd have to give up something. What would she give up? She doesn't want to give up this gold because she knows I'm waiting for because she saw me take the gold. She doesn't want to give up these rubies. But you know what she's going to do? She's just going to go on ahead and sell these rubies. And that's two. So she just grabbed the last two ruby chips. And unfortunately, she didn't sell three, so she didn't get a, a cup of kind. And now, interestingly, we have now emptied one of the chips. The, um, we basically keep playing until three of the chip types have been you know, eliminated from the game. Is that right? Is it three? I'm pretty sure it's three. DTT, new round. Uh, if, yeah, it's three. If three goods types are completely depleted, that ends um, the game we're playing. Or if the deck completely empties, that can trigger the end of the game, too. And, um, and then you, know, you tally up score and see who wins. And really, you're supposed to play this game as a series of best of three. But anyway, so Jen just sold, and she's hoping she'll now, uh, you know, she's got room in her hand, so next turn she's hoping these greens will still be here so she can grab them so she can have a big old another sale. And so now it is my turn again. I got that gold, I got that silver. But I've got some camels, so I can start building up a nice hand again. But you know what? I think you guys have got the basics. The flow of this game is so simple. You either buy or you sell. You keep going until three of the goods chips have been eliminated or the deck is empty, and then you tally up points. And this is all about using proper timing, trying to make the right moves at the right time without setting up your opponent for a really big move of their own. And I'm going to stop right there, but if you'd like to watch a little bit more, I will actually finish this full first round. Uh, if you want to basically hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen and go to the extended playthrough, or alternatively, you can go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.